Welcome back, Straight Talkers. Whether your child is a toddler or teenager, they're gonna have times where they become upset and freak out. As parents, we try our best to calm them down. However, we don't always know what to do, and sometimes what we do only makes the situation worse. So today I'm gonna to talk about mirror neurons and provide a tip on how to use them to your advantage the next time your child is struggling. So let's talk about mirror neurons and what they are. So in the early 1990s, scientists placed electrodes on a monkey's head and studied its neurons and its brain activity. They had the monkeys eat a peanut, and as expected, an area of the brain lit up on imaging. However, during the experimentation, one of the scientists grabbed a peanut and ate it while the monkey was just sitting and watching. As this happened, the scientists watched it in awe as the monkey's neurons in his brain lit up on imaging in the same way that it did when the monkey ate the peanut himself. Both completing an action and watching the same action being performed by someone else set off the same set of neurons in the brain. The scientists called these neurons mere neurons. Since this time, these neurons have also been found in humans, and there's still some ongoing debate and research about them and definitely more information that needs to be discovered. However, there's a lot of excitement in the medical community on how these neurons might affect and influence our interactions with others. By studying them further, scientists found that mirror neurons fire only when there's purpose behind an action. So if I were to raise my hand in the air and randomly move them around, your mirror neurons won't become activated because really there's no purpose behind my activity. However, if I stretch out my arms and open my mouth, your neurons will likely figure out that a yawn is gonna be the result of me stretching out my arms, leaning back, and opening my mouth wide. While watching this, you might have even yawned yourself. When we can see and predict the purpose of an action, your neurons mirror those of the person carrying out the action. So why does this matter and how does it relate at all to parenting? Mirror neurons don't just involve watching or performing an action. It's thought that these neurons might be involved with us watching someone express an emotion and then us feeling that same emotion as well. So if you see someone feeling excited sad, angry, or maybe even fearful, then there's a chance that the same neurons will be activated in your brain as the person who's going through that emotional experience. Shared behaviors and emotions are what bind people together. And this is especially true for when it comes to parents and children. This is why when you stick out your tongue at your infant, they'll likely stick their tongue out back at you. Or if you smile at your child, your child will smile back at you. Or if you're frustrated and anxious, your child is also more frustrated and anxious. This is why the behaviors and emotions you're modeling to your child are so important and powerful. If you're constantly telling your child the world's a scary place, then they're also likely gonna start believing in this. And if you're modeling to them yelling and cursing during times of stress, then these actions will likely be replicated by your child when they become upset. However, if you're able to stay calm and listen to others during hard times, you are teaching your child how to regulate their own emotions when they go through something that is stressful to them. As Dr. Dan Siegel says, your skills will become her skills. Basically what that means is mere neurons play a major role in how we learn skills through observing others. If you have other examples of how mere neurons play a role in the relationship between parents and children, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now that we have a better understanding of what mirror neurons are and the importance of them, I wanna give you a tip that embraces the idea behind mirror neurons that you can use the next time your child is feeling upset or nervous. This is called the CALM technique and it was created by parenting expert Jennifer Kolari. When we use this skill, we're trying to increase the good chemicals in the brain, which in turn helps de-escalate your child and calm them down when they're freaking out. So each letter in the word CALM stands for an action that you take with your child. So the letter C stands for connect. And the goal here is to show your child that you are present and in the moment with them. Do this by removing all distractions. So yeah, that means turning off the television, closing your laptop, and putting down the phone. Sit with them and look directly at them. Keep in mind also your body posture and what you're communicating to them. Basically, what you wanna do is try to be in a non-defensive posture so that they feel comfortable talking with you. Convey that they matter and that you are wanting to understand what they are going through. The letter A stands for affect matching. 
And what this means is that you are going to try to match your facial expression to that of your child. So if they look sad, then you're gonna look sad. If they look angry, then you're gonna look angry. What you're trying to do is let them know that even though you're not going through what they are, you're gonna listen and take in their emotional experience at that moment. We all know that there's nothing more invalidating and frustrating than when you're upset and someone you're talking to has a smile on their face and is acting as if nothing is wrong. This is what we are trying to avoid. The letter L stands for listen. You are going to listen to what your child is saying. This is not the time to tell them that they're wrong for feeling the way they are, and it's not the time to give them solutions on how to fix the problem. This is the time to paraphrase, clarify, summarize, or wonder out loud. The goal is to have them feel heard. Lastly, the letter M stands for mirroring. This is when you sit in the moment with your child and let them express to you how they're feeling. Show them that you are taking the time to really get them and what they're going through. Again, don't try to fix the problem here. This can come later once your child is feeling more relaxed and balanced. Now head on over to the next video to find out more ways that you can help your child live their best life.